in there. Uh, and uh, let's see here. The first thing they should see probably is the citizens panel. I just got it. I just got the email notification. You just got Something's the email. showing on. Yeah, well, I have to wait until the... Uh, it takes about oh, 30 seconds for the live stream to uh, initialize. So we'll just hope that it initializes and we're off and running here. Come on. Come on, you son of a bitch. Uh, I'm uh, something's showing up. Oh, there we go. You, there you guys. Except for that blank square. And that's Max, by the way, folks, in case you're, uh, you're wondering <laughs> who that is. Uh, and uh, let me just make sure all the audio and everything's going good. Now, here we are. Now, you see what I can do is I can go to a camera shot of me, okay? Or I can go to the screen, right? Mm. And that's all you guys. And uh, then we can uh, also, I can do this thing where I'm kind of like down at the bottom here uh, on the screen. And uh, uh, we're, uh, we're, we're, this is in case you've just joined us here and joined uh, live stream as opposed to our programming on uh, uh, gabroadcaster.com or, uh, or any of the number of other sources like tunein.com where you can get the Great American Broadcast Network. This is what we call a citizen's panel. These are right now six people. Uh, the blank one is Max. He's in Berlin right now without a picture coming to us. Sorry uh, about that. Oh, that's okay. We got Patrick, uh, and Patrick is in Wisconsin. Uh, uh, and he is a, a graphic uh, artist and uh, well-known uh, paraplegic. And uh, then, of course, th this guy over here. See, I have these little... Uh, I, like I can, the Brady Bunch. Huh? Like the Brady Bunch. Yeah, well, it looks like the Brady <laughs> Bunch, doesn't it? That's Mark. Mark is down in Florida. <laughs> and uh, then we have Chuck Slatkin. He, he has a still picture right now. He used to, in New York, he had a, 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 you know, a, a video image of him. But unfortunately, down in Washington, they don't have a high bandwidth internet or something. Right, Chuck? I don't know. Hey, do you have That's a, what's happening. Do you have a camera? Yeah, I have a camera. Why don't you turn it on? I and mean, then people could see you. I didn't know that it wasn't on. No, it isn't on. No, go, <laughs> down, go down to the bottom, and uh, you, there's a little thing where it's a camera, and it probably has an X, a cr little cross through it. Uh, Patrick? Uh, Jim wanted you to know that it looked good, and it's sounding good. It's a little quieter than usual, but otherwise it sounds good. What do you mean quieter than usual? Um, I guess the sound is a okay. little bit quieter coming through. Oh, then, oh, uh, oh, really? Well, I can always turn that up. Uh, let me see here. Here we go. And I'll just, maybe I'll, just I'll, I'll turn it up more. There we go. I just uh, turned it up. So that I see myself on the camera. So the camera. Oh, there right. you are. There you are. Yeah. We yeah. up until now, yeah. all we've gotten is a still picture of you out of Washington. I'm moving now. Yeah. Now in case. I'm <laughs> moving. <laughs> in case, and, 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 uh, Chuck went down to uh, Washington because he, again, I, I, you got to give the title because I am very bad at remembering titles. Well, uh, I, I'm the executive assistant to the president of the American Postal Workers Union. That's my official title. Ta-da. Great. Sounds important. Yeah. And uh, you've been with the Postal Service how long now in their union, with their union? Oh, there you are, Max. He's back yeah. again. 35 years. 35 years. So you, now you used to run the Elgin Theater, right? With uh, yes, yeah, yes. I was involved in the Elgin, but the Elgin that went out of business in March of 1977, Alex. And uh, at that time, I had a wife and a young kid, and uh, I had to make a living. So I was driving a cab uh, for a while, and then someone said, "You know, we'll take the test for the post office," and. Actually, at that time, the economy was so bad uh, in the late 70s yeah. that the post office ha had uh, 3,000 3, jobs available and 300,000 people took the test. Wow. wow. And I was fortunate to get the job at that time, and I, and I looked at it and said, look at this. Uh, in eight hours, I could make what I was driving a cab 12 hours to make. Yeah, and because there's a union, I'm also going to get you know benefits and a retirement health plan or whatever. So uh, I jumped to take the job you know, at least temporarily, and uh, 35 years later, yeah, as uh, Bukowski wrote about in in his uh, 
uh, book about his experience. Charles Bukowski, uh, the poet, uh, had ex his experience in the post office. And he went in there temporarily and, you know, eight years later uh, realized that uh, it wasn't necessarily temporary. <laughs> yeah. So, and, yeah, so I've been involved in, in the union and... Uh, it, it, sounds, is, it sounds like you really enjoy it. Well, I'll tell you what I'm doing now. Part of the reason that at this point, uh, see, to Alex, I'm a young man. I'm 68. But... Uh, uh, He's a youngster. <laughs> The reason I made this move was because of, uh, of the work that was involved in what's taking place in my union, because it really, you know, to, to leave New York and all of the changes that I had to do it was because I wanted to be a part of this, what I thought would be a historic change in, in, in my union and what was taking place in trying to save the Postal Service. And a lot of times you do something and, and you have expectations and it just doesn't match up to it. Well, this is been a greater experience than I imagined it to be. For example, yesterday I had uh, a dinner with a group of people, including uh, the leader of the uh, Iraq Union. Mm -hmm. uh, the Iraqi uh, labor people were over here uh, talking about, uh, you know, what their experience has been, you know, through this uh, this horror, and 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 there was a woman with them who talked about. Uh, the, the, the impact on the civilian population among children and the births, and depending on what city they're born in, the birth defects, you can tell because what they're responding to, say, like in Fallujah, it's the way the white phosphorus was dropped. There are certain kinds of birth defects, but in other places where it was the depleted uranium that got into the system, and there's like thousands and thousands of children being born with this horrific uh, uh, oh, birth that, defects, that, very that, similar that, to this Vietnam. Is, this is where, again, in Iraq? In Iraq, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but the, the depleted uranium situation is something that, that people don't, the, the American government hasn't talked about that often. But right. the fact is that the depleted uranium, what happened was when uh, they, they wanted to make uh, armor-piercing uh, 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 missiles, you know, like the... the the stuff you put in the the the, the, the the things you put in the cannons, uh, whatever you call them. And uh, so they, but they needed in order to pierce armor the strongest metal or the strongest compound they could find, and that had uh, uranium two thirty six in it. I think it was the strongest compound they could find, and so they put this on the tip of uh, of uh, of armaments. And then, of course, they would blow a, an armor, uh, you know, a tank to shreds. But at the same time, this stuff would also pulverize itself into dust, and people would get this poisoning from from the uh, radioactive materials. My, have I got this right, Chuck? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and now, when, when a baby is born, they don't ask if it's a boy or a girl. They ask if it's normal. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And also, isn't there some thinking... That uh, Agent Orange, or, or wait a minute, no, the, the disease, Gulf War disease that they came back with. Yeah, Gulf War, yeah, that, Gulf that, War syndrome. That, that was the, from the earlier war. Well, they think that may have also been the uranium as well. That, yeah, but, but, but also the, a lot of it was that uh, to, when they rushed them over there, a lot of the military were given inoculations that hadn't even been tested or approved by the FDA. So people were thinking that some of the stuff that was given to them to prevent disease may have also added to the, the, the syndrome that they got because they were using this you know, cocktail of, uh, of of drugs that hadn't been tested. Yeah. Wow. So you but, so uh, so you got involved uh, somehow. You've been talking to people in Iraq about all this stuff. Well, I mean, I've been an anti-war activist myself in, in my in my non-postal life. Yeah. But uh, this had to do, but um, actually my union was one of the first national unions to uh, pass a resolution in opposition to uh, the uh, invasion and occupation of Iraq. But these are unionists who are coming over. Last week I had an opportunity to meet uh, Japanese uh, uh, union people, postal workers there, mm -hmm. and what they were talking about, I don't know if they discussed about the Trans-Pacific Partnership, the TPP, this trade bill, that secret trade bill that they're trying to get through, yeah. but that, that part of what that bill does is it's trying to destroy the Japanese Postal Bank, 
which is an, an, you know, a non-profit uh, bank, because there are other countries that have, have started postal banks, and we're actively involved in trying to restart the, the postal bank that mm -hmm. used to exist in this country till 1966. Let me ask because, you, though, in other countries, sure. are there other countries that have privately owned postal services? Yes, actually, uh, the, the transition has been there, and Jack, J Jack, Japan was one of the postal services that was privatized. And the privatization of that post office created such havoc and problems in this country that it actually led to the government being overthrown. Mm. So now in Japan, they've moved back now in attempting to remake the postal service you know, to an extent uh, public again. So they're there with a cautionary tale you know, to American postal workers and the people who depend upon the mm. post office what, what took place there. Because when the when post offices go private, it means two things. It'll cost more, and there'll be less service. Right. Well, you know, I live in Harlem where we get bad service anyway, so, uh, but, you know, I don't want <clears throat> to go into that. Well, but we I find mean, that our, our post office here is terrible. It is just horrible, Chuck. Can I complain? But I was, what I'm telling you, you ha there are reasons for it. Not that I'm excusing bad service, I think, that uh, that's what it's, it's a service. It's supposed to give people a constitution, uh, constitution uh, authorized service. But what's happened in Harlem is what they've been doing is they've been consolidating the mail operations oh. in terms of the mail delivery. Mm -hmm. So it used to be that uh, you would have, you know, College Station and you would have a Lincolnton and then you would have. Uh, 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 the one on 124th, and uh, I'm, I'm blanking on the name. What they've done is they co consolidated the delivery, moving the carriers all into one station. So yeah. besides the fact that they're now crowded in there with their lockers and trying to work, they have longer distances to travel to deliver the mail. Then they have, you know, cutbacks across the board that's been you know, mandated by this, you know, phony crisis, not just in Harlem, but Harlem has had it particularly bad because they're trying to close these post offices and, and, and reduce the service, as they did, say, in, in, the, in, the, in the Bronx. They do it particularly in areas that are poor and have uh, people of color as the ones they go after, you know, the strongest because they figure maybe they have less political pull. Or in the case of uh, Harlem, you have uh, 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 some elected officials who should be replaced, like Charles Rangel. Not, well, Rang Rangel is... Uh, that's not yeah. my union speaking, yeah. but they yeah. haven't made a position no, no, on Rangel uh, yet. But Rangel does not fight for to keep the post offices open and, and the service in the community like, say, Jose Serrano does in the Bronx. Well, in all deference to uh, Rangel, there is no deference to Rangel. Rangel has been... He's been here too long. You know, the guy's, what, 84 now? Something like that? And... Well, I'm the last one to be an ageist. You know, there's a certain point at which you give up the throne and let somebody else come in who's got a little more stamina and a little more, you know, because you've got to get down there and fight for your community, you know. And, and Rangel hasn't had the fight in him in a long time. And the longer these people stay in office, and this goes for anybody, the more entitled they feel. And I think he's one of those people who feels entitled. Well, he was censored by, by, by the House because of the stuff that he had done, you know, that had pushed it over the line, and maybe, and he was lucky to, to stay in. We were talking about apartments earlier. Rangel has four rent-stabilized apartments in the same building that he was renting. Now, the, it's against the law. You're allowed to have one. Okay. Well, so you're you're allowed you're, you're you're allowed to have one, but it also you can't. Um, this is a little something I found out. You can't, in a rent-stabilized apartment, uh, rent it out to somebody else for any more than you're currently paying in rent for the place. So the so question Rangel is, four what, was, was he... two he combined into his, one was his wife's, and one was an office. And he got nailed on that. But the thing that makes oh, it... Because you can, worse, only have, you can only have one rent control? Is yeah, that what you can only have one... It has to be a primary residence... And if you have more than one residence, it can, it's not your primary. And, and, and what he was doing, that landlord that was giving him this sweetheart deal with the four apartments was giving his constituents problems. So people were writing to Wrangell 
complaining against their landlord, asking for his help, and Rangel was getting four apartments, sweetheart <laughs> deal from that same landlord. Oh, wow. Wow. That's amazing. And he's, and he's, and he's running again. You know, he's being opposed this time. He almost lost last time, but, uh, you know, as an example, you know, I've dealt with his office trying to work out some of the problems that people are having, yeah. you know, in terms of the Harlem yeah. Postal Service. And, and, and you know, yeah. they, they, closed, they closed the Triborough Station on 124th Street. And at the same time, they were trying to close downtown yeah. old Chelsea Station in, in the Chelsea section. And all the elected officials fought and kept that one open. Of course, it's right. a wealthier neighborhood. But, but Wrangle, to, Wrangle oh. just doesn't care. But anyway, yeah. let, 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 let's uh, let's. Uh, what I want to do is, uh, you said somebody said Jim Browning was Revelstoke. Jim was watching this. Yeah. Uh, and, and, yeah. And and saying that it looks good or sounds good. Yeah. Jim, yeah. Give, give us yeah. a call yeah. so better. everybody can see what you look like. Because I just looked over, and we have a lot of we have more audience watching us on live stream right now than are listening to us on uh, on on the stream on the live Ooh. stream. Combined, we have a, a giant audience compared to what we normally have. So maybe this is not a bad idea. And so far, keep your fingers crossed. We haven't crashed. Um, I'll tell you what I got going. Uh, huh? I've got the signal going to the uh, to the audio. I've got the signal going to live stream. I've got the signal I'm getting from you from Skype, right? So uh, I got all those things going, and for some reason, your fingers crossed. It's it, it's not a problem, you know. Plus, I'd like uh, feedback from people. By the way, if you just joined us and you're watching us on live stream, or you're listening to us on the regular stream, we're we're simulcasting this on live stream with a picture of the citizens panel and a little picture of me down in the corner, okay. Uh, 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 gestating a lot and uh, gesticulating a lot and uh, up up here like I'll, I can do this and what it does is it, it, it allows a spot to go where the cursor would normally go that's, uh, that's uh, our friend in Germany Max uh, no he was named Max before he went to Germany <laughs> and then here is right here that's Patrick that's uh, the uh, uh, our, our um, um, what can we call you? you? You're kind of our lawn jockey, is what you are <laughs> for the program. Yeah, that, that, huh? that's good. 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 In fact, yeah. we, we should make lawn jockeys out of you. You know what I'm saying? You think they would sell? Like, oh, you know, okay. but in a wheelchair, too. Just kind of sits huh. on the lawn, and you have a little hook in your hand, you know, so the horse can be uh, tied up to it. Right? Does it sound like a good idea? How about you? Uh, this is Mark over here, by the way, right there. That's Mark. See, I'm picking his nose with the uh, with the uh, with the cursor. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you, Alex. Uh, yeah. I'm just thinking, you know, you can 3D print yourself or someone else onto an action figure now. Really? Mm -hmm. You think we should do that? Oh, here we go. Here's here's old old Revel Stoke Jim coming in. He's down here. And he will be popping up any second now, and I'll put him up in the upper screen here so you can there see him. He there he is. There you are. Hello. So wave hello to everybody. Hello. So how's it looking? It looks it looks really nice. Really? It, it, yeah, it looks it, really smooth. Uh, when you fix the sound, it was much better. It was just a quieter feed than what was coming through. Yeah. I was listening. But did that improve it and make it louder? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. just great. Just great. Good. So far, so good. But that's what the guy said as he was falling out of the building and passing the 13th floor. You yeah. Know. Uh, so how are you this evening up there in Revelstoke, British Columbia? Look at this. We got Max down here in, uh, uh, in fact, let me put him over here so I have you in the middle. There's there's Max in, uh, in Germany and you in Revelstoke, British Columbia and Chuck's in Washington. Patrick's out in California. Mark's down in Florida. This is a worldwide phenomenon. Uh, we got to get our other listener, Andrew, from New Zealand to phone in. Yeah, he never calls me. Is well, it... because the time, it's it's he's still at work. Oh, really? Yeah, he's, I he's at work that. the next day. Well, let's see here. I'm trying to think what time it would be in New Zealand because I know in China it's 12 hours. Like right now, it's 11:17 uh, in in the morning in China. So, uh, so I'm wondering if, if New Zealand, well, New Zealand's over a little bit. 
Yeah, when he phones me, it's it's about four o'clock in the afternoon. Wait a minute, that couldn't be. Yeah, it is because we we figured it out. He's phoning at four o'clock. Well, you're from Canada. You figured it out. Yeah, right. <coughs> well, and, and plus they're going back an hour. Mm -hmm. They're going to fall back shortly. So he says uh, he doesn't know if he'll be able to phone because it'll be even earlier for him tomorrow. Oh, he does the daylight standard time and all that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But he's well, always he. He's always phoning us from the future. Yeah. Now, in China, don't don't they have like one giant time zone that covers yes. the whole country? Yes. Okay, that might it, be it, the problem. They said at one point, they said screw time zones, even though it, it technically it's not right. There are like about five different time zones technically in yeah. China. It's that big, right? Or maybe three, I don't know. But in any event... They just said, we don't want to screw up the whole country. We have one time. It's Chinese time. And I think it's based on whatever the time zone is in Beijing. Uh, and, and so they, they don't, they, it's like if we said in this country, no time zones. You know, it's, uh, you know, but people would be, of course, going to sleep while the sun was still out. It, 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 yeah, it's, going to work in the dark or something like that. You know, why people can't adjust to whatever the time is in their particular area, why we have to be so dumb as to say once a year, everybody turn your clocks back, everybody uh. turn your clocks forward. Why don't we just say, hey, you know, starting Monday, you all come into work an hour later <laughs> or an hour earlier or whatever, right? Well, there, there's the old story about... Uh, 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 like, who thought it was it was a smart idea to cut a foot off of a blanket and sew it to the top and say it's now longer? <laughs> uh, uh, <and laughs> okay. Well, I mean, it's it's the same blanket. It's, uh, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey, I just want I wanted to say I, earlier with the. Uh, the whole big Jim McLean thing. Yes. Excellent movie, by the way. And one of my sorry, favorites of all time. We didn't talk about it last night, but I think I have. I'd have to go downstairs and look. I think I have two copies of the DVD. So if I do, I'm going to send you one. Oh, really? Yeah, and you can have your own. Uh, actually, copy. Actually, of... I can probably. You know, I got to tell you, I can go somewhere online. I know and, it's and seven actually, bucks at, at Amazon. No, and download it. You know, oh, kind of. Well, sub anyway. well, I I don't know that. I would feel bad about not paying for that movie. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, 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 can you explain better than I did the horrible propaganda in the film? I mean, it is so oh, oh, irate think... that you sit there and you laugh at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, and and, uh, and he's got his protege, uh, James Arness, yeah, in this who, movie. Who, by the way, it's very strange seeing James Arness in a film where he's the buddy, the side-by-side -side buddy, of John Wayne, because you know what James Arness did in movies? Well, yeah. He oh, was, yeah. He was John Wayne's double. And when they're walking together, the, the fact is he's, just, he's younger than Wayne, but they pretty much have the same stature, and that's why he got gun smoke, because they wanted John Wayne to do gun smoke, and he didn't want to do television, but he said, I know this kid who's just like me, James Arness. And the minute they saw him, they went, just sign on the dotted line. Yeah. <laughs> and there's even a, there's even a, a quite a classic little smutty moment in in that movie for the time when they're interviewing this uh, this sort of seedy landlady and and uh, she inquires about John Wayne's height and he's like six foot six inches and she says, well, let's just concentrate on the six inches. <laughs> yes, she says, yes. You know, and it's like, excuse <laughs> me, what year was this movie? It, it, they, yeah, they, no, it, it it jumps all over the place. It's and uh, uh, and and it's funny because the big communist meeting yeah. at the end of the movie is uh, uh, oh I forgot what the bay is called, but I went there. It, it's it's the place. It's a big bay where you can go uh, snorkeling. You go down the hill, and it's still there. The building is still there. In fact, Elvis used the same damn building in uh, in Blue Hawaii. Uh, as, as his beach shack, but uh, uh, it, it's just yeah, that's where the big communist meeting is at, at this big tourist. Oh, it looked bay. it looked like it was a restaurant or something. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a it's yeah, it's 
I think it's called Homoka Bay, actually. But, but, that's do, you, just but up, you, do you realize in watching that movie how inconsequential that communist cell is? Yeah. Because it's it's at the end when they go get them, it takes about a minute and a half. The rest <laughs> yeah, of the film yeah. are a bunch of there was there's one scene in there with an, an actor I used to love, Hans Conried, who plays some nutcase who meets up with John McClane and they spend seven minutes of this film doing a comedy routine. Am I right? Yeah. Just out of nowhere, <laughs> yeah. unexplainable. Yeah. Just all. Yeah, and and uh, and uh, Alfred from the Batman series, uh, Alan Napier, is like the head communist bad guy. <laughs> yeah, right. At the very end of the movie. Yeah, and yeah. and and some of the people you can see were local people. They got to play parts. You yeah. Know? And everybody in the picture, by the way, half the people that they're going, they're meeting up with, you know, and they're interviewing, used to be communists <laughs> way back when. But got That's so right. sick, and, and they've the... seen the light, and they've yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, so just... the Duke's got no problems with them because they've 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 seen the error of their ways, and and oh we don't we yeah we can't let those people infiltrate our unions so we're gonna tell you all the information we have Duke and yeah who's the only guy ever to kill John Wayne in a movie oh that's oh, that's two easy. movies for that I, I'm gonna wait well, and say it. well actually in the shootest didn't he die at the he died but he had cancer in the shootest yeah, and was gonna die yeah, anyway he was shot by two guys i mean he was shot in that movie but i don't think i'd say the cancer was killing him if you want to say pre- yeah. specifically who shot him in a movie i mean you got to look at bruce dern and the cowboys that's right bruce and dern's the only guy bruce to dern ever kill years. huh and i told i i did a movie with bruce dern in <laughs> in like 1982 and i told him that he scarred me for life as a child for killing john wayne and he said join the line <laughs> <laughs> he uh 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 yeah they never killed john wayne in any movie except that one hmm. how about okay corral some huh no 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 nope. nope. no he didn't no, do okay, okay corral sorry. that was uh that was burt lancaster and kirk douglas oh well, no right. wait a minute wait a minute my darling clementine with henry fonda was also a reading of the okay corral, corral as well yeah. that was john ford but i okay. john wayne wasn't in that one no nope. my bad no uh but i you know there's something about wayne i gotta say this it's a guilty pleasure and i think one of the best examples of my guilty pleasure of john wayne is a film called the common Cheros. oh i got that one yeah. yeah he in that picture he is pure john wayne he is yeah. that that uh, what can we call that that persona that he created played to the hilt you know he's going around calling a frenchman monsieur yeah. <laughs> you know and, yeah, and just, him, yeah him and lee marvin that's a good that's a, Ina, a good. Ina Ballen was a woman in that film. Isn't that yeah, amazing. Ina Ballen, and who else? And, and, um, uh, and, uh, oh, um, uh, Nehemiah Persoff. Nehemiah Persoff. Yes. Yes. By the way, been jo- being joined by Charlene here, who wants to be on TV. Uh, have you been watching <laughs> this on live stream, Charlene? Oh yeah, I saw it. It's great, Alex. It's the, much better when you can see. Uh, really, I, I, you know, this is the big experiment. But if it works, you know. I don't know if you could do it though up there, Jim, because you don't, so. I, you don't have the bandwidth to do it with. No. I've no. got a lot of bandwidth going through this thing. Although I still got a lot of uh, memory left, which is good. Uh, but it's also your output. You have a what? You ha- he has a uh, what's your what's your uh, you it's know a DSL a DSL modem yeah, yeah. DSL just it, it takes through a, my phone line he, and he, he sends the show down to my uh, to our, my server here. And it takes him 20 minutes? Yeah, 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, where it would take me about, like three. About 100. The show, now the, the recording is anywhere between 90 and 100. Yeah. You, in, you, in size. Yeah, and, you yeah. could make it smaller, but that's fine. You know? Yeah. Uh, but uh, in any event, you, you know, so it would be very difficult for you to do that. It would be nice if you could. Uh, you know, I can always tell you how to do it some night, but... Uh, <laughs> Who knows, you know? Um, well, we'll give it a try one day. Who knows? Yeah. Well, it's like ruining the adventure nights because we're, that's true. Uh, 
That's on true. Boat well, or something like that. We, well, I like that, the, the fact that, that he's. But actually, you like being pure radio anyway. You hate. Do, you do. hated doing the TV thing when we did it with Play TV. Yeah, because uh, it it took away. I thought what I was doing, and then I had to create. I it just put me in the position of having to create. Uh, Were you uh, contemplating using puppets? No, never, <laughs> never. Because I remember they had a guy. They had a guy who was pitching them real hard to do some sort of puppet thing, and he was always, anytime I came down to play for a visit, he was always hanging around in in the studios working with the guys, and he had these puppets, and I think he was really pushing hard to get, like, some sort of puppet show on, uh, and I just kept thinking, oh, God, please don't let there be a puppet show. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. But, uh, Not a it, puppet it show. Just, uh, but, no, I, I had to make because it was TV and I was doing more audio kind of things, I had to make uh, yeah. graphics that moved that I could put up on the screen and sort of do the audio things behind and then come back to me sitting at a desk. And yeah, so I never really, I wasn't crazy about it. Uh, I, I like the audio. Yeah. The problem that I'm having here tonight, uh, the biggest problem I'm having uh, is that I'm trying, I know I'm on screen a lot, but I'm also having to look at all the stuff here. Yeah, and it was amazing. You, you were on screen screen twice. I noticed. What do you uh, mean? When I was watching the live stream thing, because I'm I'm well, not I'm, now. I'm, I'm in the corner. I'm in the corner, but I'm also yeah. on the screen on the on the what do you call it screen? Right. I'm and here they're, and they're reverse of each here. other. So in one you turn left, and then the other one you turn right. Yeah. Wait a minute. It's, it just that? looks very How does odd. That, work? that doesn't work. That's not right. <laughs> well, it was. That's not right at all. I have, I have to do some kind of reversal of screen or something here, but I haven't figured that one out. But what's interesting is that I'm looking at the, the scale here to see what happened at 11 o'clock, and we precipitously dropped our audio audience, and we have a rather almost larger television audience right now huh. on live stream. Cool. So, yeah, it, it's, it, it, it's the great experiment. But if it works, maybe, you know. I mean, the question is, is there a reason for it? <laughs> you know, Charlene, is there a reason for it? Why not? I, I, I think mean, that... Char Charlene, are you there? Oh, sorry. I thought you said Chuck. Yeah, no, <laughs> no um, Chuck. it was great. I got a commercial a little bit, too. There was a commercial in the beginning, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. It's not in the middle. Uh, from you in German. Better, what? It's much better in German. Me. You got no, one in German? Good. Yeah. <laughs> really? I got an Audi or Volkswagen one. Yeah, they run a commercial at the very beginning. Uh, with, in fact, they were doing that with the other service that I had. See, I had the premium before. Now I'm going back down to the basic uh, because the premium they were giving me for free, and it's three ninety nine a month if you pay for it. So fuck that, yeah. you know. But uh, this is a you know this is an interesting way of doing the show. Uh, I must say, I wish we could do something visual. I mean, uh, I know what you, we can do, Patrick. Walk around the room for everybody. <laughs> Show them that it's all been a put on. All right, hang up. Give, give me one second to get up. Uh, okay. Yeah. Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, look at Jim. Jim's got I some. Get a lightsaber. Uh, Jim's got some visuals going. Max? I'm sorry, but I have to go to bed. I have to be in work in four and a half hours. Well, okay. For me, it's 4.30 in the morning. Well, thanks for calling. It's great to have somebody calling from another country today. It was an honor to even be on in the first place. I'm oh, well, come, come back and do it again, will you? Especially on a night <laughs> where you don't have to go to work the next day. Friday maybe is a good day for that. You know, definitely. Please join. Thank you very much. All right, bye bye. Yeah. Uh, good night, for, yeah. Yeah. Good night, everyone. Good night. Wait a minute, I didn't get him to get a replacement. Oh well. Now, let me see here. Let me hang up on him. There we go. And now we. Uh, Jim, get, Jim did use the light finger, so that made my light. Huh? <laughs> Jim used the that light. That made my my night. Jim <laughs> used the lightsaber. I can't walk, but he used the lightsaber. So. Yeah, well, because you're a big Star Wars fan, right? You're a big Star Wars fan, right, P Patrick? Patrick? Oh, yeah. Patrick? Oh, yeah. Pat you yeah. can hear me, can't you, Patrick? Can you hear me? <laughs> All right. Are we better? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, okay. I was getting frightened there yeah. for a moment. You know, because no, it, there was a little bit of the, here, here's there. what happens. You know, being a, a being a techie 
or being a, a technology guy, uh, you become very Jewish. Now, let me explain that. Uh, when you're Jewish and something goes wrong uh, around you in some way, shape, or form, you somehow blame yourself before you blame <laughs> anybody else. And in technology, it's the same way. If I go, hey, Patrick, and you don't answer, and then I think you can't hear me, it must be my fault. So it's the Jew in me, okay? You can't <laughs> hear me, can't you, Patrick? I can hear you. Oh, okay, fine. <laughs> Good. I wanted, to, I wanted to make sure of that. Yeah. Uh, do you want, is there anything we could do here uh, visually that, that would be good for the TV audience? Draw from pants. Huh? Give everybody, <laughs> let's all give everybody the finger at the same time. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> Fun. Huh? Hey, hang okay. on, hang on. Let what? me just. What? I, I'm going to, I want to make, I want to take a nice picture of that. What? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to take a picture of it? Yeah. I, yeah. I'm going to just put it on my other monitor and, and, and take a picture oh, of it, I and see. then I'll post it later. Oh, okay. So because we're all on TV tonight. Now, let's never yeah. try and make this into a TV show, but for this moment only. Oh, well, you're going to be the only one not giving the finger. You're going to have your okay, camera there we go. How's that? Okay, everybody <laughs> now. Everybody. Everybody. Everybody's okay. flipping me off because I know about the camera. Take it. Take it. Okay, hang on, hang on. You got, you got it? You got it? Yeah, I got it. Okay, got it. all right. All right. Okay. Uh, we had to do something to initiate uh, l l live. Controversy. Uh, huh? Controversy. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, here's a, here's a, oh, by the way, uh, I have a recording here, which you might all find interesting. It's only interesting in that uh, in, in San Francisco, there has been a rather negative reaction to Google Glass. Now, you know what Google Glass is. That's these glasses that you have that Google makes that has a camera in the glass and you can read a readout on the glass. I don't know. It's 1500 bucks if you want to buy one. Well, yes, uh, Jim. Uh, our, our old friend Will Wilkins has Google Glass. Does he really? Yes, he does. Is he one of those obnoxious people to have Google Glass? I don't know. All I, all the pictures I seem to see so far uh, are of when he's walking somewhere, and it's a picture of the street in front of him. Uh, I don't know what else he's done with it, but he, he is a uh, Google Glass uh, wearer and user. That, well, that doesn't seem to be a very good idea, does it? You know, I mean, if it had some practical reason for existence, but it doesn't. Now, I want you to listen to a recording. This was made in San Francisco with somebody wearing Google Glass in a bar, and everybody in the bar hated this person for wearing them. <laughs> Just listen to the audio. That's all I've got. The video doesn't look much better, to tell you the damn truth, because it's Google Glass video. But he, listen to this. <laughs> This fucking, this, these fucking bitches are like hating on it right now. I can't even believe it. They're throwing like fucking rags at me. I just want to be in your place right this, now. This fucking, this, this ugly ass, this, this bitch. She's this bitch. You're killing the city. This, you're a bitch. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. I'll fucking sue you. I'll sue you. I'll sue you. Yeah. I'll sue you. Don't, don't touch me. And that is the apparel of wearing Google Glass in San Francisco in a bar. Oh, God. Wow. Yeah, people were throwing rags at her. <laughs> Did you hear that? But, Unbelievable. Uh, but what was amazing is I saw the video of it, and, the you know, the video isn't that good off Google Glass. It's okay. But what, would you pay 1500 bucks for one of these things? No. Nope. Uh, Chuck, nope. would, Chuck would probably say no, right, Chuck? No. Nope. <laughs> I mean, what good? What good is it? What you're going to go in some place uh, and you you want to record it because it's for legal reasons? How you know? It's not like these aren't the most obvious pair of glasses you'll ever see. I heard they are actually trying to make them a little more, uh, you know, less obnoxious looking. Well, they should also make them cheaper. Fifteen hundred bucks. Well, yeah, I, I would hope so. 
it'll go down in price eventually. Or somebody else will come up with a different thing. Did Wil hey. did Wilkins pay for his? I'm I'm not sure. I think he may have. Yeah, I think he may have. I mean, I could see if if you could if you you could. If you could actually stream from it and do a show and just like interview somebody right there and and like blast it off to the internet and, and I mean that would be cool but uh, just to have it on your face I uh, I don't know yeah they... Plus it, it, I don't know how how does it how do you deal with your regular glasses and and stuff well, like that I guess I don't if know. you have regular glasses you don't buy Google Glass you know well, Will has I don't know if he's wearing contacts or what were you gonna say Patrick. I said that answered that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I was wondering the same thing. If, if, if they're a hookup, if you wear regular prescription glasses, but you'd probably look like an idiot. You'd probably look like those uh, glasses that uh, they used to advertise on TV that go over your glasses, the sunglasses. Mm -hmm. And uh, those are pretty stylish. I think it looks to me, though, like you could wear a pair of glasses under them. It's like they kind of come out a little bit, you know, and that they would fit over something. Yeah, you don't look like a dork, so. Well, <laughs> that goes without and You know saying. what? I'm all about style, so. Did you ask Will about his experiences with using his Google Glass? Does he Is he wedded to it? Does he love it? Did he pay 1500 bucks for his? Yeah, no, I haven't got that in depth with him on it because I... I still haven't got over the fact that he has it, and I just, I, I thought, really? And I, like I said, I see the pictures occasionally pop up on Facebook, and and I just say, okay, I, uh, I, I don't know. I just, I haven't gone into depth. Oh, okay. With it. You don't want to bring it's a sore subject? Is that what it is? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Is it like you say, I, I have a friend who has Google Glass, you know? <laughs> you would think that anything that came out of Google, everybody would think was hip, but apparently apparently, there's a real backlash in San Francisco. There are some people who want to vote to make it illegal to wear Google Glass in the city, city limits of San Francisco because people, I think, feel that their, their, their space is being violated. I've read there's some businesses that have already said in in within our confines we don't want them in the building or in our in our business well, you know if you uh, if I, I go around like i have one of these uh, these uh, uh, gopros okay yeah and i love this camera by the way best camera i ever owned okay too bad i don't ski <laughs> you know but well uh, hey i'll tell you speaking of gopro Mm -hmm. uh, did you see the video of these guys? They jumped off the World Trade Center? Yes, set? and that was undoubtedly a GoPro. Yeah, that was amazing. Was that, night? Was that yesterday? Or yeah. When was that? And they were arresting them now. They want to put them in jail for seven years for doing that. Seven years? Yeah, and the, their lawyer goes, this is the most ridiculous thing I've yeah. ever heard of. You know, yeah, seven... That's se like huh? That's a little extreme. Maybe a fine, because it's stupid to do it in the city, but... yeah. But yeah, you gotta do something just to let them know that we don't encourage this kind of thing. But well, yeah, but not, I but uh, I I question whether it's right to 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 say seven years in prison. They want to charge them with felony like entry or whatever. You know. I know, but it's the World Trade Center. It's sacred ground, and if we don't charge them for seven years then the terrorists win somehow i don't understand yeah. why but but getting back to this uh, this <laughs> yeah, gopro okay. camera one of the reasons i like it is because it's so small that i can shoot stuff without people knowing i'm shooting but i know from years of experience of having been have sh having shot video and you know jim that i used to shoot all the time that you got to be very careful when you go in anywhere with a camera because people get a little irate at you shooting them without uh, uh, without their permission. And yep. I was in Greece once, and I was taking a shot of my girlfriend uh, who was there with me, and she was talking to the camera, whatever. And in back of her were a bunch of people at a table, and they, I think, were the Russian mob. <laughs> and they were not looking happy at me shooting. They were, like, moving where they were sitting and all of that. I think uh, I could have, on that occasion, gotten myself killed for videotaping. So, you know, uh, 
uh, so be that. So you got to be careful. And and when somebody walks in wearing Google Glass, everybody's going, well, they can take a shot of me, you know, and that's not right. You know, that's not good. But uh, uh, so, uh, uh, Jim, uh, is, is is what you were talking <clears throat> last night about something, a top hat? <laughs> there was a, a, a solitary large top hat. It looks like a very large top hat on top of my garage. It was a solitary big block of snow that had yet to melt or fall off the peak of the roof. And the, uh, my joy yesterday basically was uh, I got to occasionally check in throughout the day and see if it was going to fall to the north or to the south on the garage and slide off. You're telling me that isn't the most boring town in the world. (laughs) It's not. (laughs) It had to go sooner. I I, I was happy that it was going to go because it it just meant that it was the final snow off the roof of the garage, but it just had me intrigued at which way it was going to fall because it had been melting slowly. And it did wind up going to the north and it slid off to the uh you, you could have uh, actually started yeah, the na- national lottery over that one couldn't you yeah, yeah. i think so i think so <laughs> don't you oh, wish uh, you- by the way yeah. i've posted i've posted the uh, uh the finger photo to uh your facebook page oh really it's there yes. let me see here hold on a second uh is it uh, there wait a minute hold on i got to yeah. i have to um let me see here uh, uh, I have to reboot. Uh, I have to refresh. Oh, what do you know? I got an old. Uh, oh, there it is, right on the uh, right on the page. In fact, I could show people that it is on the page just by bringing it up here for a second. And uh, there we go. Wow! Thank you. Uh, okay. Well, there it is. Boy, you just you're such a what do we call it? A, <laughs> a, a, a multitasker. <laughs> Yeah, in fact, though I just put it up now, the Facebook page. There, I there see for a it second. Here. Yeah. Anyway, um, um, so uh, uh, Patrick. Yes, sir. How's the weather out there now? It was it was snowing yesterday. It was supposed to snow here today. It did. No, I sent Jim a picture last night, around <laughs> midnight my time. Yeah. Uh, I was listening to his show. Yeah. Because I had a doctor's appointment this morning. And I wanted to go to bed early, so I was listening to a show while I was in bed, yeah. watching it just flurry. And then I realized it was really bright outside. So I got up, and I opened my front door, and there was fucking snow all the way to the doorstep, as far as I could see. And I knew I was not going anywhere this morning because we had a good half inch to an inch of snow and I cursed Mother Nature, God, and everybody else, and told Jim that he can have the snow. And he sent me back a very nice message. And um, <laughs> yeah. apparently, so, it wasn't a nice message. It only consisted of two letters. Yeah, it was just two letters. Yes. F U. <laughs> so yeah, and it. It is now in a stretch for the next several days of going to be in the 20s. And um, we're supposed to get, like, freezing rain on Thursday. So Uh, I can't wait. Oh, okay. Good. I took myself off the picture here because I I did notice that for some reason, if I put this picture up of me, okay, in the the grouping, uh, what happens is, uh, the one that uh, live stream does is the reverse picture of what should be on the screen. And I don't understand that. <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me. So that you will see me down here, but then you'll see me over here uh, in a completely different posture. So I will just keep this on the screen only for the time being. And uh, uh, fuck all y'all, as I said. Now down down in uh, down in um, uh, uh, DC. Now you're you're not in DC proper where you live, right? Uh, uh, yes, uh, it's very proper where I live. Oh, you are in DC itself. Yeah, yeah. What kind? Uh, you know, I'm. Ne- uh, I I know people that used to you know work in DC, but they would live in Maryland right. or wherever. Um, uh, Why did you choose to actually live in Washington DC? Because it's not well, not supposed to be I... the greatest city in the world. Well, 
understand that from the time that I worked at the Elgin right through my entire postal career, I walked to work. That's about, about 40 whatever years. So commuting wasn't in my uh, mentality to begin with. So right. I looked actually for a place within easy walking distance of where the union office is, but that's like downtown. It'd be like living in a mausoleum. Place yeah. shuts down at night. I mean, there's nothing in that area. I would so I would just done, I would done something move into the Jefferson Memorial you know <laughs> nobody would know you were using it as a uh, you know <laughs> so I'm about a 20 minute walk from where I uh, uh, by I live I guess near Dupont Circle yeah it, but it's actually a, a, a residential uh, community where uh, people now move. You, I hear this term all the time, but because I'm not, I, and I should actually ask girlfriend this because you know she used to live in Washington and work in Washington. Uh, in fact, she was uh, she worked with uh, quite a few uh, organizations and uh, congressmen and senators and so on. But I've I've always heard this term K Street. Now, what is K Street exactly, and what is the significance of it? Well, I mean, there are streets that have uh, lettered names. There is an actual K Street, but K Street is where all the lobbyists are. Okay. That's where the firm lobbying firms have their uh, offices, many of them. So okay. K Street means that whole... Uh, so you know, when they talk about industry. the K Street culture or whatever, they're talking about the lobbyists. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, what, but they got the name lobby... This because they all used to hang out at a hotel where the congressmen and senators would go for lunch and sit yeah. stand in the lobby and meet them and try to convince them of things. It was like a gauntlet they had to walk every day. And so that's how the term lobbyist came into yeah. being. They would get them in the lobby. Yeah. Now, they've curbed somewhat the influence of lobbyists, haven't they? Or is that just a myth? That's, that's a myth. And a mister, I'm telling you, the, the lobby, I mean, there, there's like thousands of lobbyists for each uh, a member of Congress. I mean, it really, is a, it really is a perversion of democracy, what's taking place, the money rules, and, uh, you know, and uh, look at who some of the top uh, lobbyists are in terms of money now. Uh, Giuliani, uh, uh Al D'Amato, I mean, people who are involved in politics, then it, that ends, and then they go and say, well, I'll make some real money. Yeah, they, they do quit office and then go and become a lobbyist for, for somebody who they gave perks to while they were still in office. But isn't there a period of time between the time that they're, say, a congressman or a senator and the time they get to be a lobbyist that they have to have, like, two years or something? Uh, it, it, it's, but it's, a, it's really a relatively short amount of time for what, what they were doing and what they're going to be uh, involved in and how much money they're going to be making. Because here's, here's the thing I've never been able to understand is uh, how uh, a guy is pretty much dirt poor and becomes a senator. All right. And then 10 years later, he's very wealthy and he's only gotten like one hundred and seventy thousand dollars a year. Right. Where well, did all that wealth come from? Gee, I wonder where it comes from. But I mean, do you I know mean, any there are, I know poor congressmen because, you know, they they uh, they only they're only guaranteed two years and a lot of them don't have a lot of money. Any senator, anybody who gets to be a senator eventually becomes very wealthy. Well, it's a millionaire's club now. The majority of the Senate are millionaires. So that's the reality of the situation. And for people who've, quote, been in, in public office their entire lives, you know, making, uh, you know, limited amounts of money, uh, you know, how, how did that happen? But, you know, look at the mayor of New York, uh, uh, Bloomberg, when he went into office. He was worth four billion dollars. When he left, he was worth close to thirty billion dollars, and that includes the collapse of two thousand eight that took him down a few billion. So what? That's all from a blind trust. Uh, I think it is from. I, well, you know, Bloomberg's company has done very well. Yeah. I mean, it's it's the go-to company for finance. In fact, you go into uh, any um, uh, oh I don't know uh, investment company. And, you know, they got all these guys at the computers. The software they're using on those computers is Bloomberg. 
I mean, he's got that whole business just locked up. Now, he hasn't been running it over the years, but now that he's no longer Mayor Bloomberg, I suppose he can go right back and grab his money and grab his position, and he can run the company again. Uh, but I'm wondering, when somebody has to put it in a blind trust, can they have any kind of say-so in the company? I mean, can the company come to him and ask him their advice and he can give it? Or is that not a not right? Well, I mean, a blind trust, it's not, it's not a nearsighted trust. It's blind. It's not supposed to be connected at all because this person has phenomenal uh, influence and right. can really direct uh, a lot of things policies could be made, you know, that could, you know, benefit them. So maybe there's not direct involvement, but Bloomberg, I think, certainly knew what was good for his company yeah. and the decision. And that's what was ludicrous. I mean, people saying, oh, yeah, I'm going to vote for a billionaire because they're not going to be controlled by special interests. But they are a special interest. They're a billionaire who's going to control things for themselves. <laughs> Uh, it, because the, the you know the question that I that I would uh, probably uh, have for for any uh, buddy is uh, oh I know what I wanted to ask you I know what I wanted to ask you because you've left New York but you're not here for De Blasio have you been reading about what the things De Blasio has been doing Yeah well I mean I I had some dealings with De Blasio I mean it's he's is an interesting uh, person and he's taking on some good things and some other things are questionable about him. But uh, you know, I think mm -hmm. that uh, you know, he's a Democrat. Now let's ask. Ha let's ask. Hasn't been a Democrat in charge of New York City for a long time. Right. Okay. So, uh, 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 let me let me ask uh, Patrick about uh, De Blasio. Are you familiar with what he's been doing here in New York? Not particularly. No. Oh, okay. Because I wanted to see what a Republican thought, and since you're the closest Republican I can hurl this question at, I thought we'd ask you. And of course, I won't ask the Canadian because he he thinks that De Blasio is some form of American car that they we import from another. I thought country. it was an Italian pastry, like a cannoli. Uh, the, the De Blasio, yeah, yeah. I'll have a I'll have a, 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 a cafe latte and a De Blasio to go. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, Charlene, you've been quiet. Oh, I'm behaving, Alex. <laughs> I know you're behaving, but behaving is not necessarily not participating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything you, uh, well, how about you and de Blasio? You pay attention to politics. What do you think of de Blasio? Oh, uh, me? Yeah. Um, geez, what is he doing now? Um, he's going to close the charter school. Well, you see, that, that, that's a misnomer. He's going to close about three chart. I think three charter schools that are currently in regular schools. And since these things are privately run, I think he believes the public should not be paying for the facilities that these people are using. Um, I've never been a fan of the charter schools because I think when you rely on charter schools, what you do is you rob the public of, of you, you rob from the, the uh, because uh, if you send a kid to a charter school, the, the city then pays you to send them to the charter school, takes that money away from the regular schools, and quite frankly, I just don't think that should be. You know, I don't think that's right. I think we need to be forced to make our schools better and more yes. available. Uh, would you agree with that, Chuck? Yeah, well, I mean, I think the uh, charter schools uh, serve 6% of the, of the school population in New York City. Yeah. What about the other 94%? Are they not entitled to a good education, too? I mean, that's what we're really talking about. Right. And to me, to, to me, it's, you know, it's privatization of the public schools, similar to what they want to do with the Postal Service. They're taking, taking anything of the commons and, and using it as a means to, uh, so Bloomberg can make some more money, or his, his ilk. I think that p public schools are there to serve the children of the city of New York, get them all a quality education. Well, if suddenly, if suddenly you allow these, these, these charter schools to exist, you're creating a class system within the schooling. And, and what you're eventually going to do is you're going to rob from the public schools in order to facilitate the, uh, the charter schools. Uh, I, I just don't like the idea of charter schools. Do you have anything like that up there, Jim, at all? Yeah, the, but uh, again, 
there's a there's there is something similar with um, uh, schools that way that they want to run under um, uh, they call it French immersion and where they're they're primarily teaching everything in French uh, even out I mean this is outside of the province of Quebec mm. this is in say British Columbia or Alberta and and it's a French immersion school and and people who obviously want their child born in and and reared in the French language want their children sort of brought up in that sort of school system. Now, not all school districts can afford it, obviously. So, right. uh, uh, like for example, here in Revelstoke, we don't have it. It's just because the uh, the lower population and the fact that the school district can't offer an entire school education totally in French. But uh, yeah, so it's sort of similar is to uh, what you're talking about. Like uh, when I went to kindergarten, I actually went to a totally French kindergarten and I was looking at the photo recently. It was an old black and white thing. And uh, I'm in like a little black turtle. It, it actually looked like a group photo of resistance fighters mm -hmm. from World War II. Okay. That's yeah. how, I mean, we look like little refugees. <laughs> All, all we were missing were like baguettes and berets, <laughs> but it was, uh, yeah, it was, uh, so that sort of what everything else is, is yeah. pretty much just regular, uh, school systems. Hey, listen, uh, you know, I, uh, I don't have a, a, a Revelstoke gym following me tonight, so I could probably go on forever, <clears throat> but my, hey, before you go, can yeah. I just, because we're doing video yeah, and you're trying to do something different, I yeah. just. I had an idea here. Mm -hmm. uh, it said uh, I was looking at at Skype, and it said I could share a window, which I would assume means it would replace my image on on the stream. Mm -hmm. And I have a picture because I talk about the snow fair, fairly <laughs> often. I have video. Do you really of the snow from my back porch, mm -hmm. which as mm -hmm. it, which is about four feet off the ground. And this is sort of me walking from my back porch to the truck okay. only about a month ago. And I just was curious if we could actually share it and see if it worked. I, and could, I could probably even maybe zoom in on you if it's going to come in on your uh, thing, is it? Well, let's see. I'm going to... Uh, well, gonna first of all, let me do this. Okay. Let me do this. Uh, I can uh, bring it up so that all they're going to see now is uh, you. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I got to get this up. Wait a minute. Got to get this over and then get this up. Come on. Come on, you. Huh. I can't I can't seem to get the rest of it up. There we go. Now, uh, it's bigger than it was. Uh, okay. But we'll, we'll well, it, uh, let me go back to where I was. Well, just uh, run it. I just don't know why let this isn't see. going up. Hmm. Uh, it's, oh, it's wait, strange. now. Here, yeah. here comes something. Yeah, here comes something. Okay. There, okay. there I see. Yeah, so. Oh, there we go. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Your mailbox or something? No, that's a bird feeder. Now I'm I'm oh, walking oh, down oh, the oh, steps oh, of the back oh, porch. There we go. And yeah. this is the path. This is the pathway to my truck. Oh my gosh. That's that's one of the. There, there's a window. There's a whole window behind that snowbank. Yeah. Wow. Wait a minute. That's a lot of snow. <laughs> My oh, goodness. That's about that's about five and a half well a little more five to five and a half to six feet of snow. No. All and of a sudden I was I've been complaining about this winter all winter. All of a sudden it doesn't seem the too garage. bad. Now. There's there's the garage. Mm -hmm. there's Washington DC is okay in my book now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what the hell were we complaining about? Huh? And there's the there's the truck with all the snow on it. After a morning of, or a evening, and that's the snow pile between myself and my neighbor, and that's about 20 okay. feet tall. Now, how do I get you smaller <laughs> again? Oh, here we go. There we go. Well, how is that showing up there? That's interesting. That's very interesting. How that's, however, that's working. And okay. then I'm just going to hit stop sharing. Uh, and th there we then go. I think. Yeah. And well, there now we're we back. Go. I'm back. And there we go. Hey, listen, uh, that's um, uh, <laughs> that's about it for tonight. Um, let me see here. 
where is uh, where is this? Oh, there we go. We go over there, and we get to bring this up here, and uh, there we are. And everybody, everybody, I guess tonight you can do it more than any other night. It's just wave goodbye to everybody, you know. Uh, Hi. <laughs> good night. That's uh, when me waving. Uh, good, yeah. Good, good night, night, everybody. <laughs> yeah. And uh, thanks for joining us. Okay. On our first Thank experiment you, tonight, we might do this again tomorrow night. Uh, Maybe for the whole show. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Uh, did, did you, I hope you all enjoyed it. And yeah, thanks also fun. to Max from Germany right. tonight and also Tony who was here for a few quick seconds. Always great talking to you. Chuck Slatkin right there. There's Patrick. There's Jim Browning, Revelstoke Jim, Charlene, Dan Meyer, and, of yeah. course, the lovely and attractive Mark Thorner. He's right there, and I'm right there. Thanks, people. Adios. And thanks. we're running a little over tonight, but I hope you didn't mind that. Uh, I'm, uh...